back to another exciting episode of the House of Chop. And today, we're actually gonna build something with all these tools I've been revealing. <laughs> Mini welders third hands. If you follow me for any amount of time on Instagram or even here, you see me use these, you know how excited I am about them, how absolutely useful they are. Today, I'm in production mode, getting the chop shop stocked back up with them. But I'm gonna show you guys how I put these together. Maybe you wanna take the design, run with it for yourself, make one of your own, or maybe you just wanna buy mine. Either way though, let's talk some third hands. Now of course, third hands come in all different shapes and sizes, so why am I so excited about this little guy? Fits perfectly in a gloved hand, allows me to glide hot objects around on the table when I'm welding. I can tap things in the perfect fitment with its snoot, and it's just heavy enough to still do third hand duties without ever being clumsy or awkward. So, without any further ado, let's get a few of these suckers made. That multi-tool does an awesome job at just knocking off the mill scale, getting everything all uniform. It's a great place to start. Now let's hit the saw over here and get them cut to length. Check out the setup behind me here. It's not pretty, but it's gonna work great. I always keep a ton of two by fours and furring strips around just so I can set up stops in situations like this. When I'm in production mode, I just wanna hit that cut right every time, time after time. We're gonna be able to knock these out real fast. through those body pieces. They just need a little TLC over here on the sander. But before we do that, snoots. And they start their lives as straight 5 16 plain old copper rod. Just think push sticks were for woodworking and table saws, did you? Gotta protect those digits at all costs, kids, and these suckers, always useful. Moving on. This is hands down one of the easiest ways I've found to get a taper on something. Chuck it into a drill, send it across the belt sander. They'll soon be colored pencils. That's it, got the tapers on them, it's just that easy. Next thing to do is put the bends on them and I have a sweet little tool I do that with. Little bit of a chop tip here for a really cool tool that I picked up over at Eastwood one time when truthfully, I was just trying to fill my cart to get some free shipping, but I'm glad I did. Check it out, bottom part locks into the vise, top part just slides over like this, right? You feed your rod or your metal through here, push it around and it makes you bend for you. And see, so you got a little mark right there, one on the other side where I want it to stop. This is gonna make short work of our snoots.
I have been waiting for this part because we have to make the caps for our little bodies here. This is what they look like. Usually, these little guys take forever. I run them out of the port van but boom, upgrades, baby. We're gonna let the robots do the hard work today. Oh, life is good. such a huge fan of this little table. Beats cutting those suckers out on the port van any day of the week. This thing is just awesome. Fresh off the table, I just deloused them a little bit, wiped that green stuff off. Now they just need to dance across the DA sander real quick. They don't have all our parts together. I actually start building one of these dirt hands. Time to get the holes drilled in these body pieces. I got my vices set up on the drill press over here so they just drop in and let them cut. So this should go pretty quick. Oh, it is time for my favorite part. We're gonna fire up the Fronius Trans TIG and do some welding. I'll tell you guys, if you haven't seen my review on this, go check it out. This thing runs like a beast on 110 volts. Let's do this. I already got it folded out, but I'd be remiss in my duties right now if I didn't show you guys the folding plasma table and how it's not just good for plasma cutting. I also use it all the time when I'm grinding. I aim the sparks down into the chute where it comes out here. If you're interested in building something like this for your shop, boom, hit the link there. This was simple, quick, and actually pretty cheap to build.
The next part of this is getting the snoots welded into the bodies. We're gonna do that with silicon bronze. We're gonna get that copper good and hot, roll it up to the steel, hit it real quick with the silicon bronze, and it's gonna lock that sucker right in place. Before we weld the tail to the body, we gotta bulk these suckers up a little bit. What I use for that is this plain old lead shot. Oop, losing some on the floor there. <laughs> some goes in the tail, some also goes in the body before I weld the top cap on. Before we weld the top caps on, let's talk settings, because I always forget to do it, and someone hits the comment section and asks, all the sheet metal parts that were welded to the tubing were done at 75 amps, one pulse per second, with a 30 base and a 30 duty cycle. To weld the top caps on, I'm just gonna switch to this. This is your standard old collie, no gas lens, nothing fancy hiding out in there. Sometimes, it's just fun to use the basic stuff. The welding on the first batch is finally done. I have them all laid out, just sitting here. The only thing required now is a little 120 grit grind around the cap there and then some spinny scotch bright, and then uh, these are gonna be looking sweet. Look at these little guys. That is the current group of recruits and they are looking pretty sharp, happy with this batch. They're ready to go up on the website so they can find some new homes. Before we put them up there though, gotta hit them with the Johnson's Paste Wax. Just keeps them nice and rust free. Guys, for your convenience, I put a playlist, boom, right there of all the tools that I reviewed that were in this video. I'll see you over there. That's a wrap on this one. Catch you next time. Beautiful job.